Hello everyone, how are you? And this is a basic English vocabulary list for science. As you may know, science uses the English language in some different ways to everyday English, and this list will talk about some of the basic vocabulary, the important words, and how they are used. So the list will be in alphabetical order, and there will be many important words left out. But if you see a word highlighted in green, that means it is somewhere on the list, maybe later on. And some other useful words which I don't cover will be highlighted in red, which you can look up for yourself. So the first word is an atom. An atom is the smallest unit of a chemical element. And here is an atom. This atom is helium. It makes balloons fly up into the sky. And in a helium atom, you have a nucleus, which is the red and blue center. And you have electrons, which orbit around the side. Or at least we thought they did. This is an old model of a helium atom. The new model is something like this. And you can see the nucleus is kind of the same. But outside there is this weird black cloud where the electron might be. We don't really know how the electrons move around the outside or where they are exactly. The next unit is a cell. The smallest unit, again, but this time the smallest unit of living matter. One cell is made up of thousands of atoms or maybe even millions of atoms. And every cell is alive. So all your cells are alive, but many cells together make up every other living thing, like you or a cat or a dog or an elephant. All living things are made up of cells. So let's move on to charge. Charge is the amount of electricity carried by an object. So in the picture you can see lightning. And the charge is carried by the cloud and moves to the earth. Charge can be positive or negative. And as you may know, if you've ever looked at a magnet, if you put positive and positive together, they repel, but positive and negative will attract each other. So that's positive and positive repel. They push apart and positive and negative attract. They pull together. Next, we have a compound. A compound is a substance that is made from two or more different elements. We haven't looked at those words yet, but basically a compound is anything that is made from more than one different thing. So here is a compound. What compound is this? Well, this is water. And water, which is sometimes called H2O, is a compound. And each molecule of water is made from one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms. You can see there where the H2O comes from. You have two hydrogen, H2, and one oxygen, O. A conductor. So not these conductors, not a conductor of music or a conductor on a train or bus, but really a substance which carries heat or electricity easily. So Metals are often good conductors, and they can carry electricity. You can see copper in a electrical box on the left, or heat. You can see a iron peg, which is red hot there on the right. So they also conduct heat very easily. So anything which carries heat or electricity easily is a good conductor. Okay, an electron. An electron is a tiny particle with a negative charge that is found in atoms and sometimes outside of atoms. An electron is very, very small. It is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. And if you don't know standard form, then there it is below. That's 0. 
30 zeros and then 911 kilograms very very small number and electrons are very important because they help create bonds and the bonds between atoms is what forms all matter and we are all made of matter so they are very very important to us okay an element an element is a substance that cannot be turned into simpler substances so if you remember, an atom is the smallest unit of a chemical element. If you take an atom of helium and you break it up, then you do not have helium anymore. If you take an atom of oxygen and you break it up, you do not have oxygen anymore. You cannot make it smaller. And this is the periodic table. You might recognize it. These are all the elements we know. There are 118 right now, but maybe we will find more in the future. Energy. So, energy is a very hard idea to explain because it is so abstract. Everything is energy in different forms. Atoms are one kind of energy, and light is another kind of energy. And in fact, the first law of thermodynamics is energy cannot be created or destroyed it can only change form and here are some of the different forms of energy not all of them there's kinetic energy which is movement electrical energy which is charge when you have a lot of charge in one place you have electrical energy built up mass energy so this is atoms and anything made from atoms is mass and that has its own energy so you are mass energy then thermal energy or heat you can see the iron poker there has a lot of thermal energy because it is glowing red hot and something else that is very hot is the sun uh, the sun has a lot of thermal energy but really it runs on nuclear energy which is the energy from inside atoms coming out uh, into another form and that is nuclear energy force a force is something that can make an object change speed direction or shape so here's an example you have the cue on a pool table the cue hits the white ball and the white ball hits another ball and all movement is caused by forces. So the Q moving has a force which it gives to the white ball. And then the white ball carries its own force to hit the yellow ball, which it then makes move. So all movement is caused somehow by forces. Gas. So this is not gas that you put in your car. But gas is when the molecules in a substance are separate from each other. So gases are not solid. You cannot touch them. And here are clouds, which are something else you cannot touch. But clouds are made of water vapor, which is not the same as gaseous water. So if you look there, gaseous is the adjective form of gas. And gaseous water, you cannot see. If you have gaseous water, you cannot see it. It is invisible. Clouds are water vapor. So here is a scientific model of gas. You have all the molecules in a gas moving around, different speeds, different directions, all moving freely inside a space. Insulator. An insulator is the opposite of a conductor. An insulator is a substance that does not carry heat or electricity very well. So the best insulators are ceramics and plastics. So ceramics, the sort of things you make your mug from that you drink hot tea out of, and plastics, which we all know. Rubber is a good insulator it keeps us safe from electric shocks if we wear rubber boots or cover wires in rubber then the electricity cannot hurt us an ion 
So an ion is an atom or molecule that has an electric charge. So an atom has electric charge when it has too many or too few electrons. So this is a helium atom and you can see we have two red protons which are plus, two blue neutrons which are zero, and two yellow electrons which have a negative charge, remember. Just think about the charge. You have two zeros, that's zero. You have two plus, that's the protons. And then you have two minus, which is the electrons. So you have zero times two, plus two, minus two. If you add all of that up, you get zero. And so an atom of helium has zero charge. But suppose we now take one of those electrons away. We remove one electron with some energy. Now we have a helium ion. You see we have two protons, we still have two plus, but we now only have one minus. So overall we have a positive charge on this helium ion because it now only has one electron. And ions are different to atoms in the way they behave. Laboratory or laboratory. A laboratory is a room where scientists do experiments. So it has to be a very clean place where scientists can control the experiment they are trying to do. And you may have heard I can say the word in two different ways. Many people say laboratory and many people say laboratory. And you can hear that really I am dropping one of the O's each time. Either the first O, laboratory, or we drop the second O, laboratory. Liquid. Uh, we looked at one state of matter, that is gas, but now this is another state of matter, liquid. And in a liquid, all molecules can move around, but they still touch each other. So if you remember, in a gas, all the molecules are free. They can move around on their own. So you cannot touch a gas. But if you've ever tried to pick up a liquid, you know that you can touch it. But because all the molecules can still move around, you cannot pick it up without something to hold it in. You need a container for any liquid you want to pick up. Uh, water is the most common liquid on the planet, and obviously there is a lot of it around, but it's always the same. You cannot pick it up if it is liquid unless you have a container to pick it up in. Of course, water is not always a liquid. We sometimes see it as a gas or a solid. We'll talk about that another time, but those are liquids. Mass. So we've talked about mass before. Not this mass, not mass in a Catholic church. Mass is the absolute amount of something. So if you have more mass, you have more stuff. Mass is measured in kilograms, but it is not exactly the same as weight. It is similar to weight, and often when we talk about mass in everyday life, we mean the same thing as weight. But in science, there is a difference. Mass is absolute. Weight is relative. So mass is always the same, but weight can sometimes change depending on where you are. So with mass, we calculate how a physical object moves. Now this looks a bit difficult, but what we can see is the gray ball moving on a string, and that is the mass. The gray ball is a mass, and the force that it creates when it swings is shown by the two arrows that are moving. And those are the velocity and the acceleration. And we won't talk about those right now, but you can see that they change 
depending on where the mass is. So mass is very important for any physical calculations. Matter. So matter is anything that has mass and is made from elements. In fact, it's anything even smaller than elements can be matter. But usually when we talk about matter, we are talking about something made from elements. And you can have pure elements like carbon or sulfur. Those are matter. Compounds like water or steel or potassium ferrocyanide, which we all know, I'm sure, are made from matter. And even a gas like carbon dioxide is made from matter. So that's the end of this part and thank you for watching and I hope you found it useful. Bye bye for now.